Welcome back to Pole Barn Garage, where today we're going to be working on the finest of garbage, this 1989 Corvette. I bought out a car lot of three really junk cars you're going to be seeing coming up. I bought the 68 Cutlass, the 71 Le Mans Sport, and then this 89 Corvette for $500. It is worth every penny, let me tell you. We've got the aero package on here. We've got the hideous 90s wheels. We have all the peeling, waterborne, clear coat you could ask for. The natural water feature in the roof. It's very fancy. We have the theft recovery special. And worst of all, we have tuned port injection. Inside, we have quite luxurious accommodations in the C4 vet. There seems to be a horticulture experiment going on here. There's all kinds of things growing in the floors. She's got the digital dash. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fancy. Custom uh, steering wheel here. You could drive that with handcuffs on, no problem. Let's pop the hood and see what's under there. I haven't even looked at it. Uh, how do you do that? Here it is. Oh, there it is, right there. Uh, I don't think it works. Well, <laughs> hmm. I don't know how to open this. Oh, it did the trick. <laughs> Who knew? Under here we have one of the worst things ever devised by man, the tune port injection. We can see if it will work, but I was, when I loaded it on the trailer, I noticed that the fuel line looked like it was cut in here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. At least I'm assuming that's a fuel line. Uh, that's gonna make things difficult and you know this isn't gonna run anyway so maybe we just go ahead and start by throwing a carburetor on it well, I suppose first things first let's see if it cranks and I'm gonna do that by just throwing a battery in it and see what happens mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. yeah maybe I'll hook this up and the car will just burn itself to the ground immediately and and then we won't have to worry about any of this you know and I could just move on to something better Oh, electric fans running. Oh my god, all kinds of stuff is happening. What on earth? Stop. Why? Interesting. Any gas coming out of there? Maybe you're just a vapor hose. That'd be cool. I mean, there's no way it runs, right? Oh my god, everything's on. Stop. Stop it now. Thankfully, someone has taken the liberty of removing the key. Oh, cranked. Shit, cranks good. It only shows 106,000 miles. It's too bad this thing is so trashed. Well, everything shuts off. My butt is very, very wet now. Ugh. Obviously, we got no fuel. Probably have no fuel pump. I mean, that's got to be the fuel line, right? I mean, I keep going back and forth on it. Yep. Looking under here at the gas tank. That ripped off line is definitely a fuel line. Check the oil in it. Make sure we're good there. Oh, yeah. Full of oil. I think she'll, uh, she'll be a runner. Well, I have made my decision. We're going to rip all this off and put a carburetor on it uh, to keep things simple. Now, also, I kind of want to make it into a vet cart before all the hateful comments start. It's a C4 Corvette, nobody cares, and also has no title, and it's just trashed, man. But we can have fun with this. Well, the first step to getting rid of this complete disaster of an intake is removing all of it, you see, so. This is assembled with the second worst thing known to man, Torx bits. We gotta remove our throttle cable and our TV cable for the 700 R4 in this. And we will have to uh, make sure we reinstall that on the carburetor. Kind of like when we did that Jaguar that has the small block in it uh, last summer. We could probably do without the cruise control where this car is headed. And we'll now ever so gently remove the air cleaner housing. Very gentle. Get our upper hose off here. These are just awful. I mean, there's no room in here. You can't do anything. You've got wires, and computers, and stuff. I don't really like driving a calculator. There it goes. Ugh. Bone dry, just how I like it. Upper intake should be pretty much ready to come off of there. Come out of there now. Oh, Jesus. 
Ah. Oh, it's got more things attached to it. Of course, 7,000 vacuum lines and wires and hoses and, and stuff just everywhere. God. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, so let's throw this right where it belongs in the scrap heap. Next step here is going to be remove the fuel injector rails, I think. And then we can access the lower intake, remove it. I think I gotta pull the runners off before I get to those rails. Is that not how the the fuel rails come up? I mean, what? Come on. There we go. A little sticky. Might have a little varnish. You know? Okay, how did that help me? It doesn't appear to have helped me at all, as far as I'm aware. What the hell is this thing? Is this thing going to be here? What is, oh, God. What the hell is that? Uh, you know what? I'm getting out the death wheel. Goodbye, smog pump thing. Yep. Ah. Ah, yes. What does any of this stuff do? Nobody actually knows. What is this thing for? Nobody knows. Nobody, nobody knows what this is. Ah, yes, well. There we go. See, now that's out of our way, and we can disconnect the fuel lines pretty easily. There. That was easy. Phew, that is full of varnish. Excellent. There. Yep. yep. Uh -huh. So I need to get this runner out. The rest of the way, I gotta pull this valve cover, so I'll just gently move this wire in. Well, taking a peek inside the valve cover will kind of give us an idea of what kind of shape the engine's in, too. Oh, of course. There's so much crap in these cars that you can't even remove a valve cover. Yes, it requires a game of operation to do. That lousy bolt right there. An eighth of an inch would allow you to remove the valve cover. Like, that much. Why? Why? Why, are they, why were they like this in the 80s? What was wrong with them? I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is never a problem ever again. Like magic, the valve cover can come off now. It's amazing. A miracle, really. All that so I could remove this. So I could remove the intake. This is why nobody likes this crap. Goodbye. Now that said, this engine is in very good shape inside, it looks like. Very, very clean. Aluminum heads here. Pretty exotic stuff for 1989. And what we gotta do next is pull the distributor out of it. This is number one on these. And they're secured with bolts that you can't access because they're back here. It's really nice and handy. So, uh... <clears throat> ah, there we go. There, that's how you do that the easy way. We just want to take a note of where our rotor is pointing right now. And it is pointing basically directly at the transmission dipstick, which is pretty handy. I'm just going to make a mark on that dipstick. That way when we drop our new distributor in, which you have to change the distributor, these are locked out at zero, they have no mechanical advance because they have computers that do it for it or whatever. You'll have to put a standard old school distributor in it. And these are a roller cam. Typically you need like a bronze gear on a roller cam, but these factory cams are a little bit softer than the aftermarket ones, so you don't really got to worry about that too much. And out you come. You know, working on this uh, has made me realize that I never actually want to own one of these that I care about even remotely. Look at, I mean, there's just no room for anything. There. Want to take a guess where this is going? That's right, in the scrap heap. Goodbye. And last, we can remove the lower intake manifold. Oh no, of course I have to remove everything attached to it in order to remove anything. Imagine doing something as simple as replacing a thermostat on this thing. I mean, that would be a nightmare. Ew. This thing's maybe not in the best of shape. Uh, yeah. Dump all that stuff right down in the engine. That's great. A little cleanup work to do here. It's just full of nutshells. Hindsight being what it is, I probably should have done this first. So these are roller lifters, you can tell because it has this spider thing in the middle. And what that means is the lifter does not spin in the board, it has a wheel on it and it rides on the cam. Pretty high end stuff for the late 80s. And uh, it's a good small block to build from. Is the intake gonna go with here? It's a generic Summit Racing dual plane. Uh, I picked that up at a swap meet for 30 bucks. It'd be a great candidate for this. I'm a little concerned with how much room I'll have around that oil sending unit in the back here, so. 
let's just uh, give her a quick test fit before we commit. And yeah, there's plenty of room. It's gonna look just fine in there. And one good thing about the C4 here is the way the hood opens, you could just crawl right in here. So I'm gonna build my china walls out of some RTV. I personally don't ever use the gaskets. And I like to smear just a little bit of RTV around the coolant ports to help position our gasket. And also takes up for any pitting or anything in the surface of the head. I like to give them about 10 minutes just to skin over a little bit. And then I figured they're ready to go. It looks like the RTV smushed out pretty nice all around. I got this complete set of intake bolts off of Holly's clearance. They're for a big block Chevy, but I think they'll work on this. I think they were like $2. I mean, come on. Always torque from the center out. Oh, yeah, there we go. Torqued. That's exactly the correct foot poundage. Actually, it's in Newton meters. It's pretty complex stuff. Let's go ahead and put a distributor in it. Got this uh, random used Chevy distributor. At least I think it's a Chevy distributor. Got that laying around. We'll throw that in. We're going to drop it in, try to get it to point at that transmission dipstick. Okay, so it's gone past just a hair. I'm going to have to get a big screwdriver and turn that oil pump back. You've got two things you got to deal with when you install a distributor in anything. you got the oil pump drive and you have the teeth on the cam. On a Chevy, the oil pump drive is just a blade. So if you could just get down on there, grab the oil pump drive shaft, turn it back just a smidge, then we could try to redrop in. Hopefully our gears will mesh correctly. We can get that thing to point right where I want. Boom, right at the dipstick. That gives us enough room to play with even if we're off a tooth or something like that. So we're just gonna change out this one valve cover gasket here, uh, cause I had to remove it. Slam this back into place here. Now that I've got that bolt out of the way, we should be able to just drop it right in, right? Just that easy, just so simple. And lots of room in here. Oh yeah, there we go. I'm kind of having a, some issues with the angle of this dangle here <laughs> and uh, because if I put a normal Chevy one on, it's not very good, is it? We kind of need one that just goes straight. Let me go dig around a little more, see what else I can find. I got a used thermostat here out of something, who knows what, and then some random water neck here that seems like it might work. And I have a random really long hose here that might work. Turns out that the radiator hose I found under my workbench is an exact match. See, you just plop it right on like that. And she's good to go. All right, there we go. Some 600 Holly, uh, vacuum secondary, nothing special. Should get the job done, no problem for this thing. Bolt that down, get the plug wires on, and we're running out of daylight, so that might do it for today. I robbed this throttle bracket assembly off the Jaguar uh, just to make things easier because it has a 700 R4 uh, bracket in it. However, I think I'm gonna have to flip this bracket around so I can get a little more tension on that cable. It's very critical that that gets set up correctly. A little bit sloppy, but she already self-adjusted. You can tell it's maxing out the cable because it's moving the whole bracket. Uh, that's probably pretty close. We're not going to know for sure until we drive it. Then we can fine tune. Uh, I got to figure out how the hell I'm going to hook this to a carburetor. Uh, I'm thinking a few zip ties will probably do the trick. Uh, so we can shove that through there. It kind of lands where it needs to land up here, and uh, then we just, you know, zip tie right through those holes, and it'll work fine. What could possibly go wrong here? <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. Oh my god, I've done some stupid things, and this is one of them. Well, I've returned to the vet here, and uh, I've done, a, did a few things last night. Put a heater hose nipple in it, we can hook that up. We have to plug this weird little teed off line. For the heater hose there, gotta plug that so we don't spray coolant everywhere. You know, I didn't have a plug for that, so I just put a shutoff valve in the intake there to plug that hole. Hook up vacuum lines, brake booster, PCB, uh, vacuum advance. Uh, probably gonna have to plug this EGR crap. It may not be necessary right away, but we will have to do it. We gotta find a 12 volt keyed power for it, and then hook up a boat tank, a fuel pump, and see what happens. I'm kind of just scrounging for everything I can find here. Uh, you know, I'm trying not to spend a ton of money on this thing. Today is Thanksgiving, 
So happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I hope you had a good one. That's why it's kind of late in the day. I don't know how much I'm going to get done today. I'm barely functional, if I'm being honest. We'll get what we can done. It's supposed to snow in like two days, so I got to at least get this thing to be able to run and drive into the shop uh, before that happens. Look up the brake booster and uh, notice it's made in Australia. It's weird. Also, this car has been off the road since 2002, 21 years ago. That uh, explains a lot. Salvaging some vacuum line with the submissions garbage. Aha! Uh, commence the beeping and the whirring and the buzzing. Or not. Well, that's a little concerning. Oh, there we go. That's incredibly inconvenient. Key's on. Let's see if we got any power on our factory coil wire here. We might. Now that makes things pretty easy. Hell yeah, I'll take that. Let's see if we can find the fuel pump power. You know, it'd be cool if we could use the original fuel pump power. Seems I've angered this thing somehow. It no longer wants to crank. Everything comes on. We got power everywhere. We got no cranking. Maybe it's a neutral safety switch? Not really sure. But we'll deal with that in a second. Let's get our boat tank mounted and everything. Uh, oh wow, it actually worked. Huh, okay. Wow, the shocks are even good still. Oh, that's installed. Could there be any fuel pump wiring in here? Maybe. Ah, hey. I bet that's a fuel pump relay. Well, this uh, white wire, whatever the hell it is, seems to have power. That'll work. Let's make sure it goes off with the key. It doesn't. Okay, that will not work. <laughs> there we go. Mm-hmm. And there's bound to be some wiring in here. Also, that is a steel tank, so I'm glad we're going boat tank. I have no reason to take a chance on it, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think we made the right call there. That's junk. Whew, that stinks. Well, one of these things is bound to be fuel pump. There we go. Purple and black seem to be power for the fuel pump. That'll work. The clack's all wired up. Conveniently just routed everything right through here. It's beautiful uh, all right so we can clean this up now that's ready to put some gas in it it works we got to make the damn thing crank though that shifter won't move let's start there let's try the gentle approach first hey there we go <laughs> please work Well, I don't know what the deal is. It's getting cold and dark, though. I'm going to poke around up here in the wiring, see if I can't find where the actual start terminal, you know, from the start terminal on the solenoid of the starter runs. Uh, and then if we just put power to that, it'll crank. We have power on the distributor. We have a fuel pump. It will run. I didn't have any luck up top, but however, uh, you can get right to the solenoid. It's right on the bottom of the freaking car. So I hooked up a jumper wire here. Let's touch it to the battery, see what happens. All right, guys, you have to pardon the lighting. You know, not all of us have multi-million dollar shops to work in, and some of us have these things called jobs we have to work around, too. And, of course, we'll make this better later, but I, I really just want to get this thing to run. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, let me turn on the fuel pump key and uh, see if it makes some noise. Let's put some gas in it first. We got gas now. Let's see what happens. Be good to me, girl. Oh, yeah. All right. Come on, baby. I know it's cold. Yeah. Woo. Right, let's get that timing dialed in. Well, she's a runner for sure. That looked like the backing plate of the water pump. Like it's got a hole in it or something. It's just pouring out of there. I don't think K-Seal's gonna take care of that. Uh, so I'll get a water pump on order for this thing. It's a special one, of course it is. Kinda smells like fire, not gonna lie. 
it's probably fine. We gotta plug that, that EGR pipe there, uh, as well as these. That's why it sounds so weird, but overall, I'm pretty damn happy with that. Good morning, everyone. It's a brisk and beautiful morning. And by that, I mean it's cold as hell. So let's get this piece of crap started and try to pull it into the shop. Uh, I'm gonna air up the tires. I think it's got one or two flats. Let's see if we get it started. Check the transmission fluid. Hopefully the damn thing goes into gear. That's kind of important. Also, it's missing a steering wheel. I forgot about that. I better go find a steering wheel. <laughs> I don't want to trash these tires driving on them low, you know. They got a lot of life left in them. You can't hardly tell that they're flat just because of the, how low profile they are. I uh, feel like my life is probably in danger right now. Ah, right out of the scrap cooler. <laughs> Will this work? Let's see. Um, I guess not. Oh, yeah, it kind of does. It's that telescopic wheel that's going to throw us for a loop here. I'm trying to figure out how to make this, you know, not suck. It looks like the inside of that bearing has come apart in here. Uh, maybe that's why they had it tore apart. So on these telescoping columns, this part just slides right out. I think there's like a really long bolt that threads in here and that cocks the whole, like turns the whole thing and then it won't slide out anymore. I just took a screwdriver and was able to tap around on that, make it quite a bit better. Just driving that in, obviously it's not gonna last. We should be able to just put a little tack weld on that, just retain that bearing, it'll work fine. Well, that lasted for about two seconds. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to deal with that once we get it in the shop. Well, let's see if this heap of shit will start. <laughs> Got something in it. Yeah, let's try it. I don't think it has reverse, but it moves forward all right. The brakes work. <laughs> Oops. It's not good in here. Uh, that must be pretty low on transmission fluid. It moved at first. Let me get down to the flat ground here and we'll check it again. That's not good. It's got fluid. It's only about a quart low. We'll try it. Got Transmission's junk. I've got it up in the air. I wanted to make sure the shifter is actually moving the linkage, and it is. I think the trans is probably launched. Okay, I just put it in gear and it moves. What the hell? What did I do? Well, let's put it in the shop. I kind of think we got a sticky solenoid or something in it. Hey, maybe we can work with that. that at all. Well, I think I'm gonna run up and get a filter for this thing. It's some fluid and we'll we'll throw a transmission filter in it and just kind of clean it up. I bet that fluid's just nasty and sticky. Uh, it's worth a shot. I would have just gave up on it and ripped the motor out of it if it wouldn't have pulled in here. So you you got a second chance at life here all right just just play ball. Cold weather moving in. I went ahead and uh, winterized the shop here. You know, we're, uh, that's, that's insulated. It's like R58 7 thirds. Yep. We're waiting on a transmission filter for this. While we wait for that, why don't we go ahead and throw a water pump on it. I have a Boltster here. Uh, this is a company that makes these little organization trays. And with, they're like made out of silicone, right? So you can just stick bolts in them and hold all your bolts. It's pretty handy. I've had them for a little while. I always forget to bring them out. Uh, I'll, I'll drop a link down for them. They're not paying me to say that or anything. I just think they watch the channel and they're a cool company. You know? I have to remove this giant dinner plate off the front of the engine, you see. You know what this does, GD? Uh, no. Nothing. <laughs> We're gonna serve dinner on that bad boy later. Uh, also, you might notice the nostrils. 
that we have installed. Well, not installed, but set on there for aesthetic purposes. I think we need the nostrils. This is in my way. Let's make it not be in my way anymore. Yeah, this is in my way. Hmm. Yeah, this thing's really in my way. Well, it's less in your way now. It is, but... There we go. Now it's, now it's really not, you know, <laughs> too much in the way. <laughs> Wait, if it falls off, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> we'll be smart today. This is how well made these cars were. Look how many body shims were there. Two? Good lord. We don't need to buy those for a while. There she goes. There's one of those. Thankfully, working on all the sophisticated, more modern vehicles like this, are, uh, this is so much better and easier than an old car. Like, instead of just like two bolts to take the water pump off, you have to disassemble the entire front of the engine. It's so much better. You know, it's really more sophisticated. Twice the amount of work. Yes, exactly. That way they can bill you for twice as much. Ah. See? Come on, we're gonna lose the shop. There's a hose here that runs through it. Oh my god. This is so dumb. I love new cars. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Be thankful your car's a 59. It has one thing. Can you imagine, like, growing up working on cars in the 50s or 60s? Uh -huh. You know, everything is user-friendly. Mm -hmm. And then they come out with this crap. <laughs> and then watch those fuel lines, you know. Can you imagine if I wouldn't have disassembled most of it already? What a bitch. At least that's out of the way. Yep. Now we can take the water pump off. Wow. JD managed to get the ratchet. Um, stuck. Good job, Judy. Thank you. Um, hopefully we can still get this off. I'm pretty sure it'll just pop right off. Once you get down past all the BS, it's just a regular small block in here. Oh, water pump. That's right. There we go. Oh, huh? shit. Uh, I got a winner here, guys. It... I can't even put my finger through that. Hmm? Oh, it's a winner. You know why? Look at that. That little rust hole there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to guess that it had a leak there, and they just started dumping stop leak in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell how well that worked out for them. So anyway, let's just ignore that and uh, pretend we never looked at that, and uh, we'll just put a new water pump on it and call it a day. 50 bucks for this bad boy. Pretty nice water pump, i got to say. You'll note that I didn't clean the bolts off. Oh. No, I did that for a very specific reason, because I'm lazy. Well, no, because the grease will hold the bolt in. Well, yeah, and I'm also stupid. Hey, this is a lot easier without the hood on it. Yeah. I'm glad we did that. You know, maybe this thing will be like, wow, they're they're really taking care of me. I mean, they're really going to do great things for me. Maybe, I'll, maybe my transmission will just start working. Or, you know, maybe it won't do any of those things. And then we burn it. No, well, <clears throat> done. Definitely not, GD. Don't be ridiculous. Well, let's get these fuel lines out of our way anyway, right? It smells weird. <sighs> oh. oh. Hey, there was gas in it. <laughs> JD's trying to figure out how to work on the world's easiest heater hose. See, yeah, it's very simple to get to that, you know, and tighten that clamp. It's no problem. Really simple. I don't know what the holdup is. JD's getting it buttoned up up here, putting the tensioner back on. Actually, I had a new belt. It was in the. I bought it for the Jag on the way back from Arizona, and it's for a vet. So, we'll go ahead and throw this on here. Well, then we'll dig into the transmission. <laughs> you know, the the actual problem here. Okay, just put the belt on. You know, serpentine belts are way better than V belts. 
you know, it's modern and, and superior. Uh -huh. See how simple and easy it is? Yeah. You see how really just no problem it is it to figure no out? There's a diagram right there though. So yeah. we should probably work off of that. Around here, it goes under that, right? Yep. So it turns out you don't need this thing. This is just to reduce the felt shock of the engine when the AC compressor kicks in. So we'll just uh, fill her up with some antifreeze. We'll get her up in the air. I guess we'll uh, service a transmission. Huh? That sounds like fun, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh boy. God, look at the stop leak coming up out of this. No, it's fine. Shh, don't look at it. It's fine. <laughs> no, stop looking. Oh my, no. <laughs> oh. See how the back of the car's off the ground? Yeah. The cars are very rigid. They're actually pretty well made. It looks like the crackheads got one of their catalytic converters. They didn't quite make it through this one before they got shot. But it's missing that one. This one's halfway sawed through. Let's uh, go ahead and continue this complete waste of time. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the pan, drain the fluid into this mortar tray. You know, then we'll put a filter more fluid in it and then it still won't work. Ah! <laughs> ah! Stop it! <laughs> ah! Get it in your eye? Yes, all over. Oh, it stinks. Oh, oh God, it smells so bad. What the hell Ew. is in this stuff? It's so burned. Oh, this thing's junk. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh. It. They're beautiful. Beautiful. That's what we want to see there. I mean, that's actually not what that... we want to see at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, That's pretty bad. Yeah, this is one of the worst I think I've ever seen. we got an appetite now. We'll just let that drip dry. Let's take a look in the pan. Oh, man. The filter's completely plugged. That oh. might have been it. Well, that's a magnet. That's just metal. <laughs> actually not that bad i mean it's all stuck to this magnet that Ew. part's a little concerning that's pretty bad but like as far as the rest of the pan goes it's not that bad magnet did its job yeah it did i would say transmission definitely it's okay good. it's definitely fine yep apparently there's no bolts for this nope there it goes Oh, of course the seal stay behind. There's the new filter. If you wanted to see any more than that on an automatic transmission, um, well, you're not going to find it here because, look, I'm just some regular guy, okay? I'm not going to be here pretending that I'm some kind of super genius. I don't know anything about this, and uh, this is not the car I want to learn on, okay? In fact, I never want to learn on them, like most guys that do this stuff, right? So, I don't, I just don't care enough. Uh, I flew again. Oh, that magnet's flat. <laughs> oh, it was just covered up so much. Oh, look at all that clutch. Oh. Is that clutch? Yeah, that's clutch material. Oh. Mm -hmm. There we are. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised this thing has a cast aluminum. And that's kind of cool, huh? Well, it'd be cooler if it would bolt to the damn car. We'll get this baby bolted back up. We're gonna let that RTV set up while we eat dinner. Then we'll fill it up with fluid and see if the thing moves. I really think that might have been it. I mean, that thing is yeah. pretty bad. That's, that's probably the worst filter I've ever seen, actually. Uh, you know, normally, even when you have a transmission that's bad, you take them apart and I mean, the fluid might look kind of gross. Like, I've never seen a filter just plugged. Well, let's change the oil here while we're waiting for that. Doing anything. Did I just round that off? Because I've, I've got the one-size-fits-some wrench here. And uh, maybe I should just get the right wrench, huh? Yeah. She's got a Pins oil oil filter. Oh. oh yes. Mmm. <laughs> yes. Pins oil oil filter. Huh? It's only the finest for this piece of shit. Look at what I'm doing. Look at what I'm doing. Use a good oil filter wrench to tighten oil filter. See that? See that? That's just the kind of evil that I am. Oh, it's quite the interesting soup we've made here. Bathe in it. Only the finest 
of liquid golds for this bad boy. That's right. Store brand. Mmm. See, we don't have to use zinc in this because it's a roller cam, so if you think about it like that, I'm basically saving money right now by owning this car. Gotta warm up the goo. So I'm just gonna preemptively install some miracle goo in here. Uh, that's gonna fix it, for sure. Oh, it's too thick to go down the tube. Here, I have an idea. So we'll put a little of this in first. And we know we're gonna need at least a gallon. Now we just put this in here. And then we put the whole mess in. There we go. Well, we'll fill this up and fire it up. And pray a little. I get that timing set a little bit better. But hey, it, it works. Yeah. I'll take that. This distributor moved. It retarded itself a lot. That's why it was so doggy. Yeah, shit, it'll probably run great now. Well, we're gonna actually bolt the steering wheel on. But before we do that, I gotta figure out a way to retain that bearing. And the only thing that comes to my mind is to push it down in there and uh, throw a tack weld on either side of that shaft and well, that'll work. Somewhere like, uh, oh, right about there. <coughs> Not enough room in this. There we go. There. Oh. A little wobble to it. I, I can live with that. Yeah. As long as it stays in there, you know. Seems like it's gonna. I think it works. Yo, it's uh absolutely on fire. It is? Oh shit. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh my god. Oh no. Shit. <laughs> uh oh. Goddamn 1980s cars are so flammable. Here. Uh, is it still going? I don't know. There's smoke coming out. It's fine. Yep. All right. Well, I'm missing, well, you know, everything to disassemble this or to reassemble the telescoping part of this column. So I'm just going to shove it in and weld it. And, uh,. We will, well, let me get this out of the way first. There we go. But uh, I just need to cut a little access hole here so I can weld it, you know. Did we uh, just set this on fire? Yeah. Oh, okay. And we're gonna do it again? Yeah, probably. 
No, we're hey, good. Look at that. Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that works pretty good. Yeah, cool. I'll take it. Yeah, all right. I have returned today. Uh, I want to start ripping the car apart. I mean, uh, restoring it. We got a few things to wrap up here on the engine. We got to plug all this EGR nonsense. I found, so this is the big culprit right there, that big tube there. I cut off the other end of the tube and realized that one of the old intake bolts fits in there pretty good so we'll just weld that bolt in there and that'll seal that we'll copper coat it glue it right back down that'll plug that shoving a giant bolt will plug all these air pump uh, for this smog pump or whatever uh, these will plug that no problem so I have this comically oversized bolt here it fits in there pretty nicely and uh, we'll just cover it in some copper silicone because it's heat resistant and uh, yeah I mean we want to really make sure that we're doing this right uh, taking our time uh, making sure that we're giving this car the justice it deserves as a uh, fine American sports car oh that is simply beautiful wow what a thing of glory that is wow I I amaze myself. All right, let me just put this in the workbench here so I can weld it up. There it is. It's in the workbench now. I know, it's hard to tell. Look at that beauty. Oh my goodness. Now that's some welding, folks. Mmm. Well, I think the balancer has slipped or something super goofy because it was reading like 50 degrees. Uh, it's not that, but well, whatever, it sounds better. Well, anyway, let's completely dismantle this entire car. Ah. We obviously got to make this thing as light as possible so that it is actually respectable as the original American sports car. Let's see if I can figure out how to pull this front bumper off of here. Mostly because I'm putting off actually doing things inside the car. Because uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I bought it off of a car lot and it's kind of in the not best neighborhood. And there was homeless people living in the cars in the car lot, and well, this is one of them, so I'm kind of scared what I'm going to find in there. Look <laughs> at all these quality shims everywhere. What a finely made car this is. Will you come off of there? Oh, there's another bolt. Oh. I'm kind of a Corvette specialist. Uh, yeah. You don't want that on your bed. That was kind of a, it was a, it was a rare option to, to not have that part. Okay, see, we don't need any of that. All optional. We will, of course, be disposing of all of this in an environmentally friendly fashion. So don't worry about that. I think we uh, might want to take it for a test drive. Okay. Uh, before we uh, delve too much further in. We're actually putting bolts back in. Uh, this was unbolted. I didn't unbolt that brace. But uh, now JD will finish our battery hold down install, you see, for safety. Uh, just uh, sit anywhere, you know. Okay. Yeah, it's that boost and stuff. Uh huh, just deal. some stuff. What the heck is this? I am not sure what the hell this thing is. <laughs> Heavy, whatever it is. Door won't unlock. You know, of all the cars I bought, this is the only one that had keys. Won't even and they're not even the right keys. I know it opened. I did. What? Well, good thing that won't be there for long. I mean, uh, we're gonna restore this car. In. Ah, oh. in the comfort. All the glass. Mm. So you got no roof. It's nice. Uh -huh. Oh, the tires.
fuel pump. Those things are terrible. Should have cleaned this out first, huh? Yeah. Oh my god. You good? Uh, I think so. All right. It seems to work. Yeah. That's actually surprising. It's cool. Hey, you left all these burnout marks down here. Huh. It runs okay. I think the weights in that distributor are stuck. But I was kind of wondering if all that stop leak might have been a head gasket, but oil's nice and clean. JD, there's two ways to make something faster. More power, that's expensive. Or getting rid of weight, that's cheap. Pretty much as I suspected. They're not totally froze, but they're definitely rusty and nasty looking. I mean, barely hanging in there. I mean, they seem to work, but they're sticky. I have this Chinese distributor here. I'll just go ahead and rob the weights and springs out of it and uh, probably change out the cap and rotor while I'm at it with this one. Uh, I didn't want to use the Chinese distributor because, well, they're terrible. But uh, yeah, maybe I should have in hindsight. Just open the door, JD. Cut. It's just, just open it. It's easy. You need to cut those wires. Yeah, but it's this. this one is no, no, no. Cut those wires. Open the door. Very easy. Very simple. Well, we'll take care of that door here in a second, but I just want to show you. I, I just decided to clean up the uh, factory weights in here and put the new springs on. They move real nice now, so we'll uh, put this together with a new rotor and cap. That should be good. Hey, look what just showed up. Our new beanies from PoleBarnMerch.com. You could pick you up one of these bad boys. They're champion. They're nice. We got a good deal on them. They're like close out, you know, like bulk champion items. I guess they don't make this kind anymore. So uh, we snagged them up and selling them as cheap as we possibly can. So go to PoleBarnMerch.com. Check them out. You're actually not supposed to take the target tops out of these cars. A lot of people did and uh, regretted it very badly. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I will dispose of this in an environmentally friendly fashion. Mmm. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Should we? I kind of like it right now. I do like too. The vet cart. I don't know. I mean, it's still recognizable as a vet. Like with the tail lights? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I actually think this might be superior with the wing, too. Mm -hmm. Fancy speaker. Yeah. Just cut the wires. Well, this is a good speaker. That doesn't mean you can't cut the wires. Oh. Cut them on the other side of the pigtail, and then we keep the whole thing. God. Hey, look, evidence of the homeless people. The special Corvette rug. Oh. Gentle. We will dispose of that in accordance with EPA regulations. What's in here? 
Oh, oh God. Oh, the hell is that thing? I don't know. What in the name of God? Is it the ABS pump? It is. What the hell? What's in this one? Ooh. Transmission fluid. The jack. A koozie. Whoa. -ho. Look at that. That's very 90s. Oh, a bottle koozie. Uh-huh. Big shots and fire hoses. Yeah, I think we did the right thing keeping the tub in here. Now it's yeah. useful. It is useful. Gently remove this radio. That's a classic. Alright, we're all set, aren't we? I routed the fuel line more safely. I've wired the starter to a push button for extreme convenience. The snow is here, so let's go drive it. Better buckle up. At least we got seat belts. Heck yeah. Nice. Now our dash is so much better now. Yeah, this thing's pretty much a winter driver. like 30 miles an hour. <laughs> What the heck? What is it, dude? Exhaust. It the flames ran. were just going all over it. Like coming out of it the whole time. Well, it's fine. Are you sure? No. I just saw fire. And... Oh. I never put that back. Oh. Well, that's gone now. Well. At least it gets dark in like five minutes. Maybe the fire, is there a plug wire off or something? It is, it started to run kind of weird. Cause it was like flames were going, coming out of the exhaust. Yeah, it's cause it's so amazing. Yeah. Hang on, let me check the firing order just to be sure. Because mm -hmm. I did put a new cap on it, you know. Uh huh. I just verified the firing order, it looks fine. I don't really know, but I don't know. Maybe that's one. Maybe. It's alright. Yeah, a little bit of blue for flames, but that's, that's it. That's normal. Alright. this uh, setup here. I can do maintenance and drive at the same time. Pretty cool. You don't get that on most cars, you know. Lost 
transmission there for a minute. Good thing I drove even further from home. It's almost nighttime. It's snowing, and I don't even have my phone on me. I don't either. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, I hope it gets us home. All right. We've turned this into an adventure all of a sudden. I'll take it easy on it. multitask all day. This is no problem. Ah! It's making weird noises and feeling oh. weird. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, what kind of car do you even get for 500 bucks these days? What a piece of crap. Can't do anything. I think it's safe to say that it's great. It needs nothing. What's, what's wrong with it? I honestly don't know uh, why it's running that way. Actually, I kind of wonder if it's that clicky clack fuel pump. Yeah, it probably is. It's an $11 one from Amazon. <laughs> it ain't hot. It's, it seems okay. Yeah. Hear a buck? Huh? Did you hear a buck when it started? Yeah, yeah. So it's, the timing's a little far advanced. Not too bad though. The transmission is junk. It's going bad. Definitely. And, but it, you know, cause it, it would run great. Yeah. And then, no. you know. And then it just wouldn't even do anything. I just started this to move it. So this is reverse. See how it's really hard to move? Yeah. Put it in neutral. The forward solenoids are stuck in the transmission. It's stuck in forwards all the time. Even in park, it's trying to move. Well, we'll just ignore that. Yeah. I think the last thing we're gonna do to this in this video is install the nostrils. Uh, so I have this old cam. And it kind of fits. See, the thing is, they're too tall. It needs to be up a little bit higher. It needs to be up what? I mean, we could try to make it out of this can. Like make it bend it wider. Yeah. And we'll cut it up here. Uh huh. And then we'll just snip it up the side, open it up, and then make the cut out of tape. Uh, I'll show you. Yeah. Whoa. Look at that. Wow. Pretty good, huh? All right, so we set her up just like this, right? Uh -huh. Now we go get some metal tape. Metal, okay. I see what you're doing here. Yes. Yes, you see this? Uh, yep. See my genius? <laughs> Pretty smart, huh? I can't afford a tunnel ram. I can afford a coffee can. Behold the nostrils. See? Those definitely won't fall off immediately. But they look cool sitting here. But with that, I think the ultra budget vet cart has come to a close. At least for today. Got any ideas in there? I was thinking 671. Then I was thinking transmission, pretty much a wall. Uh, I don't know. You let me know. You got a you got four speed laying around for cheap? You know, let me know. Hit me up. Uh, uh, we, maybe we can do something with it. This is, uh, honestly, this will just be my little yard buggy and I'll use it to drive around here when I'm working on stuff. 
uh, and use it as a go-kart and drive it in the woods and stuff. Kind of like JD's Kia on the other channel, Outside the Barn. Make sure you subscribe to that. Uh, so check out the merch sites. Uh, you know, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next time on Pull Barn Garage. We'll be working on, I don't know, probably that Red Bond's next, I'm guessing.